Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the tank review for the brand new tier 8 premium American medium tank, the Soldier On M67. It's an M67 Zippo, but it's got the Megadeth collaboration skin on it. In terms of the skin, I like the skin on the Zippo, it does look pretty cool. I mean, <clears throat> it's fully for the Megadeth fans. I mean, I'm not really a fan of Megadeth. I'd never really listened to them. I'd, I'd heard of them, but I'd never really listened to them before this collab. And yeah, they're not my cup of tea, really. But yeah, the, the tank itself looks pretty cool. In terms of the way the tank handles, in my opinion, I feel like it's basically a slightly worse version of the M48A2 premium tank. Pretty much. Because you have a better top it swings and roundabouts because this actually has better mobility than the M48A2 pretty similar armour in fact I think the armour is pretty much the same but the gun is slightly worse in terms of its penetration but you get a flamethrower because it is one of the flamethrower tanks so you do get a flamethrower on your main cannon is it exceptionally useful? I don't really think it is to be honest I think you end up losing far more hit points than you should by having to use the flamethrower you may as well just use the main cannon and be done with it. If it was a secondary weapon firing flamethrower, maybe it would be useful. Kind of like, you know, like the TVP has. But for a main armament cannon, I'm not sure the flamethrower is even that useful, to be honest, in my short playthrough of it. But without further ado, oh, and yeah, it's also like, what, 10,000 gold? Yeah, 10,000 gold. There's so many other tanks. That, uh, number one, wait for discounts for stuff, but there's so many other tanks that are better than this tank for like 10,000 gold. I mean, I think that's a pretty much similar price to something like the Sergeant Slaughter, or should I say the T-54E2, because you won't get the Sergeant Slaughter, which is a far superior tank, and you get it for you know similar price. Is it worth 10,000 gold? No, I, don't really, I really don't think it is. Not at all. But it can be all right. It can be all right in its own... It can be a, a decent tank in its own right. It's just... Uh, I don't think the flames are... The flames are just a bit of a gimmick, really, and the they're not that effective, only really against tanks that you can't do anything to with your main rounds, and yeah, it's kind of annoying to have to keep switching back to your standard round on your third shell, which is really awkward. But without further ado anyway, let's get into the stats of the Soldier on M67 Zippo. We have 810 horsepower, 51.2 kilometers an hour top speed, 23 kilometers an hour reverse speed. 17.42 horsepower per ton ratio means you do hit that 51 kilometers an hour. You do feel a little bit sluggish at times, but for the most part, that 51 kilometers an hour top speed is something you hit. That is better than the M48A2, which is the tank that I said I'm comparing it to most because it is basically the same tank. And that has obviously a 45 kilometer an hour top speed, so this is this is definitely faster. Internal fire chance is 20%, which is pretty high. It does get set on fire a little bit, but to be honest, a lot of the tanks are between 10 and 20% anyway, so it's not... It's just an RNG fest in that regard. You've got 1,450 hit points with 36 degrees a second hull rotation speed, 1.7 on soft, 0.75 on medium, and 0.65 on firm. Terrain resistances are fine. You don't really have to do much to buff those up. You, you won't feel that too much. The hull rotation speed does feel a little bit sluggish at times at 36 degrees a second. So it's something that you might want to buff up with clutch braking. It's up to you. You've got poor camo, but that's a thing for most of the M48s, to be fair. They don't really have the best camo in the universe for mediums because they're quite big targets. They're a bit more heavy in that regard, so they don't quite get that good a camo. You've got 390 meters view range, which is okay. You can buff that up to a very good range with optics and situational awareness, born leader, etc. You've got 34 degrees a second on the turret traverse, 1.43 on the accuracy during rotation as well, 35 degrees of elevation, which is really, really good, and 12 degrees of gun depression, which is definitely very, very nice. Didn't quite realise it had 12 degrees of gun depression, but yeah, you've got 12 degrees of gun depression, which is really, really good for on a ridgeline, and you can really depress the gun. It just means that you're really flexible on a ridgeline. The problem with the M48A2 and the M67, for example, though, is that they do have a very large cupola that is very easy to hit that will mo will be popping over the ridgeline most times. So it's like, yeah, I have 12 degrees of gun depression, but most of the time when I'm fighting things, they have an easy shot at a big cupola, which makes it a little bit awkward. You've got a 5.5 second reload, which... <laughs> with the rate of fire it says 389 that's because it's a flamethrower yeah don't, don't really pay attention to the flamethrower stats you do have about five i think it's a five second reload or 5.1 second reload with the build that i have for the 240 alpha that you get 
which is pretty decent. It's about this. I think it's about the same as the actual M forty eight eighty two. You got point three five accuracy. Bad accuracy during movement. Well, not bad. It's not. It's not too. It's not good. It's not bad. Two point fifteen accuracy during movement, which you want to buff up with run and gun, for example, if you can. Vertical stabilizers too. And, yeah, you really want vertical stabilizers as well because of that 1.43 accuracy during rotation. you got 2.1 second aim time, which actually isn't too bad either, really. I mean, you get that down to about 1.9 seconds with a crew, so that's all right. You've got 100 shots per clip. I don't know why it's, it lists stuff like this with your flame. As you can see, you've got three types of ammunition. You've got flame, you've got heat, and you've got AP. So your third shell, the one that you think more, normally would be HE, is actually AP. It's your main round your ap round your premium round is heat and your main standard round as it says is flame which has a 262 max range so you really have to be paying attention to how far things are away from you if you want to be firing the flames let's say though are you going to be using the flames that often probably not because it's just not as useful as firing the main cannon and yeah you've got 192 penetration on the standard AP rounds, with 258 pen on the premium rounds, and 100 pen on the flames, but you don't pen anything with the flames, you just set things on fire externally, for example. Yeah, 258 on the heat, which is pretty damn good. I mean, you're going to pen most things you're going to face with 258, you're only really going to struggle against a lot of these stuff like Type 5 heavies, E100s, and mouses and stuff like that from the front. And that's where your flamethrower comes in, because you just launch flames at them. But the problem is, while you're doing probably five, six, seven hundred damage to them with the flames, and if you do manage to get the full length flame out, they're probably still hitting you for like a thousand, probably all your hit points in the time that you're trying to do damage to them with the flames. So, yeah, there is that to bear in mind. The annoying thing for me is that the 940 meters of shell velocity is on the standard AP rounds. And 1,219 metres of shell velocity on the heat rounds. So the heat rounds are actually way faster than the AP rounds. So something to bear in mind that if you're firing at range, you might actually sometimes be better just firing the, the premium round, pretty much. Which I always wish it was the other way around, but it is what it is. And in terms of money, it only makes 150% silver bonus, which is, 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 is not the best. I mean, to be honest, if I'm, if I'm looking for a tier 8 premium to make money, I want it to have at least 160% silver bonus, at least. But, I mean, it still does make decent credits. It still does make decent credits anyway, as long as you're not having to spam the heat rounds. And in terms of the armor, let's have a quick look. As you can see, the turret front is just like the M48A2, where it's got that buff value of 254 around the gun mantlet, 250 on the actual gun mantlet itself, 203. And as you can see, the cupola is the weak spot with 165 mil of thickness, which means that, yeah, most tanks you're going to face are going to just butcher your cupola when you're on a ridgeline. Only really tier 6s are going to struggle with this frontally, to be honest. But the rest of it is very M48-ish. So what do I run in terms of equipment on the M67, the, or the whatever it's called, the Soldier on M67? I run Advanced Loader, Vertical Stabilizers, and Optics. I run the Advanced Loader to make my DPM 10% better, if I can. Vertical Stabilizers to help the gun handle in as much as possible, and Optics to be able to buff my view range up as high as it can possibly go to. Because as you can see with view range, with optics and food you get it up to 447 meters view range and that's without the crew which is pretty damn nice and in terms of a crew we've got dave mustaine here i run if we can go to it there we go born leader rapid reload six sense situational awareness trap mechanic rapid aim running gun snapshot steady aim so these three to always help the gun as much as possible i set this up more most like the m60 or the m48 to be fair because i really want to help the gun out as much as i humanly can do with these three gun perks rapid aim to make the turret traverse better because like i said the turret traverse has 34 degrees a second which is two degrees slower than the tracks so i really want the turret to try and keep up with the track traverse if i humanly can get it up to that and rapid aim does help that do that track mechanic because you can get tracked and i would especially with the way this thing is you're probably a little bit more brawly with it I want to make sure that if I do get tracked, I get the tracks back on as quick as possible. And these four, well, this corner, as always, is one. You're always taking this corner in World War II. Always, always, always. But there's, again, that's just how I set it up. There's many, many different ways to set up a tank. It, it's best to how it suits you. Because, I mean, realistically, if you wanted to just use the flamethrower all the time, you could take drop rapid aim, for example, or drop one of the gun perks, and run armor angling to reduce the amount of damage you're taking. Because you're going to take a lot of damage by just sitting there flaming people. 
And if you really wanted to do it to try and reduce how much damage you're taking from the people as you're ye- sitting there yeeting flames at them, you could just run advanced armor and armor angling and just have memes of a flamethrower, right? It's down to you. But like I said, the flamethrower isn't really that useful if I'm 100% off it. Of- if I'm 100% honest with you. So you want to make sure that the main cannon is your priority. So let's have a quick look at the stats of the M67 as it's fully kitted out. And as you can see, we've now got what we've got. 499 meters of view range, which is fantastic. It means you're going to be really, really good at spotting. As you can see in one of the replays, you've got 1.57, 0.69 and 0.6 on the terrain resistances, which is decent. You've got 41 degrees a second turret rotation speed, which is now faster than your hull rotation speed by a, a wee bit, which is nice. It's exactly why I took rapid aim, because it was annoying how slow the turret was compared to the tracks. You've got 0.95 accuracy during rotation now, which is down from that, what, 1.4 was it? Something like that. You've got, oh yeah, and by the way, your flame reload doesn't change. No matter what you do to the tank, the flame reload at 5.5 will not change. So that's just a heads up to you guys. You've got 0.28 Accuracy now, which is decent. 1.23 accuracy during movement, which is way down from, what is it, 2.4? Something like 2.2? So that's way down, which is nice. 1.93 aim time, which is useful. And uh, uh, you'll have to wait till we get to the replay to see what the actual reload's got itself down to. But yeah, the M67 Zippo, I mean, well, the soldier on, it's... Like I say, it's basically an M48A2. If you if you own the M48A2, you're probably going to miss out on this tank, unless you really want a flamethrower. Unless you really want the flamethrower. But then, to be honest, you may as well just go get the TVP VTU and play that instead. I say it's not it's not a bad tank. It's just I feel like there's way better out there for your gold at ten thousand six hundred. And there's a tank that most people have already earned for free because it was in the season pass, the M48. Was it the last season pass, something like that? So most people already have it for free. So most people will have a tank that basically plays exactly the same and they'll already own it. So unless you really want the flamethrower, I don't think you're going to get this tank, if I'm totally honest. And I haven't really enjoyed it. But then, to be honest, I don't, I, I didn't enjoy the M48A2 either. So I'm a little bit biased in that regard of the fact that I just don't like the M48A2. So I don't really like this tank. And the flamethrower is not enough of a gimmick to make me enjoy it, pretty much. It is a little bit quicker, though, which is something that can be nice. But, yeah, on the whole, for 10,600 gold, is it worth it? No, not really. There's, yeah, there's just far better out there to pick up with your gold. Unless you're, again, a, you're a massive fan of Megadeth 2. So, as always, everybody, I am going to show you the replays where you can enjoy hopefully some decent replays and see how the tank handles itself and make your own mind up on how it handles. So I will see you all in the replays. So here we are on the replays with the Soldier on M67. And this was the very first game that I had in the tank. We are on Heilbronn. And I was really keen to use the main cannon as well as obviously the flames because I wanted to see how the flames handled. Because I wasn't really convinced with the flames on either the TVP or the OK. I mean, on the Churchill OK, it was basically like, you may as well just not use the flames. Because your main cannon is that good. and fires that quickly. That you may as well just use the main cannon. And only really use the flames against things that you couldn't pen. And on the TVP VTU, it's actually a pretty handy tool to use on the TVP VTU. But that's because you could fire with the main cannon. And if someone's all in you, you just keep your hull facing towards the tank that's all in you. And you can just keep flaming them while you wait for your main cannon to reload and then fire the main cannon so with that being the multi-weapon system for flames it was like yeah that's kind of handy but for this on a main cannon it, like i try and use the flames here because i really want obviously this is the first game i'm having i really want to use the flames and it really looked like i was hitting that light tank but all i did was actually hit him for 33 and that was it and i took 500 worth of damage and then unfortunately we end up hitting the floor with our main ap there going against that strv 74 but we do get a nice shot into the Carnarvon action 10 there which tracks him in place and damages his ammo rack hopefully we get the finish off which we do that farther land down there we are going to have to fire the see so this is where i kind of prefer the m4082 especially as well because that that farther land down there i'll have to fire heat my 221 standard pen on the M48A2 would work, but on the M67 Zippo, yeah, it doesn't work. I've got to fire the, the premium heat to actually pen that guy, which is why, I don't know, this is why I feel like it's just a slightly worse M48A2. Yeah, sure, I'm a bit quicker, but that loss of pen just 
never, doesn't really feel too worth it, if I'm honest, to gain a flamethrower and that little bit of extra speed. If this thing had 221 pen on its standard AP round, sure, it'd be fine. And I really do wish that the, the ammo choice would switch around so that the main choice of round was actually AP because it's really annoying every single time to have to keep switching to the third shell to actually be able to fire your main cannon, right? Because I, I keep doing it where I keep loading, I keep clicking A to go back to the main shell and going, wait a minute, these are flames, I don't need flames. And then going, oh, goodness me, okay. So we've loaded flames, and that's because there's a pansy egg over here. And once again, I just want to use the flames. <laughs> I just want to use the flamethrower. It's what I want to do. And... So we're going to just go after this guy. You can see I'm trying to lead in front of him, but it's not quite going where I'm aiming. It feels really awkward. And unfortunately, we missed most of the shells on that Pansy Jaeger. And now we're just loading the main shell again, which is heat because we'd have to switch over twice to get to the AP, and I hadn't really thought about it. And um, we got one shot into the Pansy Jaeger, which we didn't actually roll high enough to kill him, unfortunately. And he gets shut down by the Super Hellcat. The VK3002M shuts down the T37 that was just over in the distance. And now, once again, we've loaded flames. And that's because I want to go after this M56 Scorpion. And finally, it looks like we actually hit him. We've, we've definitely killed everything in his tank, and that M56 is dead. But what did we do to that guy? I'm sure we set him on fire, but I think we only did about 150 damage to him. Because other people shot him. We would have probably just been, we would have been way better off just firing the main cannon. As you can see there, I actually still had the flames loaded. And because those guys are a good distance away, I could not go after them. So I had to reload again for 5.7 seconds. Sorry, it was not 5.1 that I said in the, in the garage. 5.7 seconds, I had to reload for that to be able to actually engage the enemy tanks. So we have this talent in front of us, and we're just keeping popping the shots at him. He only has 175 pen, and with 217 pen, he might still struggle with my front end, so I'm just giving him as limited a chance as possible to get the shot in. We try and get a shot into his turret there, but there was a very slim shot, and we ended up missing. Thankfully, that T-44 can't get a shot at us, and now we're fully loaded. That talent makes a mistake, and he drives out in front of our gun, and we shut him down, putting us on to 1,500 damage with 1,600 assistance. And realistically... The reason, the reason we've got 1,600 assistance is because we've been trying to use the flamethrowers. So we actually haven't been shooting the tanks. We've just been trying to flame them. And thus, everyone else has been damaging them. We've just been getting assistance for the spotting, which is, yeah, bizarre. But we're going after the last tank that we know is over here. And that is the medium tank, or the T-44. But actually, there's an SU-100 directly in front of us. I'm like, okay, once again, I want to use the flamethrower. <laughs> I want to use it. It's going to be effective. So we've loaded the flames. We're ready to go. And it's like, hello, Mr. SU-100. And we're just going to launch the... F and once again... I'd have got the kill if I'd used the main cannon. <laughs> it, what, what was the point in doing that, to be fair? There was, there was no point in doing that. I may as well have just loaded the main cannon. I would have got a kill on that SU-100. And got more damage as well. Because again, I only did 90, 96 damage. Something like that. For that about three or four seconds, five seconds of burst. Yeah. The flames really just are not that useful. We're finished with 1,696, 1,648 assistance. The third class, the 1,353 base XP... Not not a very good game in general for the M67 there, to be honest. But I just that was the first game that I played, and I was like really determined to use the flamethrower, and I used it in a lot of situations, especially where it's just not helpful. So... Yeah, it wasn't very helpful. But now we're on to the second replay. And the second replay, we're not going to use the flames quite as much. And we are on this map, which is Overlord. And on Overlord, we are going to go to F9. I'm going to go to F9 over here on this little ridge, because obviously I can use my really good gun depression and my pretty decent turret armor, as long as I don't catch the cupola, to pretty decent effect. And I can start trying to work the enemy team over. I'm not paying attention to where I'm driving at this minute. <laughs> we went too far over on the wrong side. We try and lead the shot in the C71DA, but to be honest, that was poorly aimed. Um, we try and get a shot into this batch at 12T, but oh, the shot just flies high. The, the shell velocity on this gun makes it feel exceptionally derpy, because it, I don't know what it is about it, but the, the shots just seem to fly in sort of funky directions. Unfortunately, we, again, if we had 221 pen, we would have penned that tier 7TD, but we ended up ricocheting off his lower plate. And unfortunately, we can't quite get a shot at this T29 because he is now hauled down. Although we go for the lower plate and end up hitting the upper plate. And th by the way, this crew that I have in this tank at the minute is 
Dave Mustaine. So when you're hearing the crew voices, it's him. So that's his voice lines because he does have the voice lines, Dave Mustaine, which is really cool. I really do like the the. There you go. I really do like the additional voice line commanders, right? That are out not outside the normals. That's why I love the Sabaton commanders so much because their their voice lines are pretty damn cool. And yeah, anyway, what was I saying about that? Oh, yeah, that was it. The the shell velocity on this AP round makes it just feel really wonky when it's shooting out the gun. There's a amount of times when you're leading something and the shell just goes in a weird direction. And it feels like it loops as opposed to going straight into the tank, which can be a little bit frustrating when you're trying to lead the target at a bit of a distance. So now we're against this 45 TP. And this is where, again, 191 pen is not holding up too well. Because, or 192 pen, because we can't go through the cupola of this 45 TP if we hit it. But if we had 221 pen, we could actually go through just his turret front in general, to be honest. So we are struggling a little bit with it, and this is a tier 7 heavy. I mean, imagine what it's like in tier 10. It really does struggle against tier 10 tanks. I mean, you do have 258 pen on the heat, which can help, but they just generally do far better against you than you do against them. But that's the fate of a tier 8 tank in a tier 10 game, right? So. We are trying to get some shots into this 45 TP. We finally get a shot through his upper plate. We're up to 938 damage. The game's nearly three minutes old and we've basically done nothing. We've had some terrible aim at times and then some also just poor moments from the tank's gun. And once again, we get a shot finally through the, the top of the 45 TP's turret. And I'm going for the flames now because it's about, you know, it's a little bit better. And that's because he's only got 30 HP. I didn't have to pen it that time. Because I, he had only 30 HP. And I've realised there's two guys behind me that could come over at any point, right? So I decide, you know what, screw it. I'm alone. I'm not going to suffer these guys behind me. We're just going to go after this batch at 12T. And you can see I am trying to flame him. But I, I may as well have just shot the main cannon. Once again, I've done like 50 damage. If I'd shot the main cannon, I would have penned him and hit him there and done, you know, 240 damage. We get a shot into the batch at 12T, which who... He gets shut down by the T-32, and now we're going to go back over to try and deal with the DA and the mutts that was behind me. Like I say, I knew I was alone in that little ditch, so I just so I realised that it was like, no, I have to get out and pull back and go after the batch at 12T. He was also managed to isolate himself behind this ridge. So we're just going to try and keep this gun working as much as possible. So we pop over, get a shot through the turret of the DA there, which is quite lucky because it like I actually snapped the aim away from the DA there and it flew in anyway. We'll, we'll take it, we'll take it. And we get another shot into the DA. The SU-100M1 is coming over to get a shot at us, which we slap a shot straight through his lower plate. And we're up to 2.8k damage so far. And the DA's just got shut down. The Panzer 58 Mutz is in front of us with the, what, the... T29 just got shut down as well. So we come over on the mutts, fire it, auto-aim the shot. That's what you get for potato aiming, mate. That's what you get for potato aiming. We bounced off the mutts. We should have just aimed properly and we'd have killed that guy. And now there's only one tank left directly in front of us. And that's this SU-100M1. So we pop over, potato aim again. This time, potato aim works. And we managed to actually get the shot into the SU-100M1. And he gets shut down by the LTG. We're up to 3.1k damage so far with 75 assistance there's three tanks left there's two guys on the beach and there's a heavy tank that was sitting around b4 so we're gonna try our best to get there and see if we can actually get any shots into them which is this is where obviously the mobility of the m67 is a little bit nicer than the m4082 because the m4082 it does only go at 45 kilometers an hour whereas obviously we're going at 51 so we do get there a little bit quicker again nice RBRT on the move there to get a shot straight into the side of that Ferdinand and I decide okay I can't go after that Ferdinand he's gonna die this guy's pretty healthy over here the Visa 44 one so we load the flames here we go let's just flame this guy go for the full burn he can't kill me in one go and this is where the flames have come useless again because this man's popped his flight flamethrower flamethrower his fire extinguisher <laughs> And that meant that he had fire suppression, which was useless. And right here, I'm just like, you're going off the cliff, mate. But then I realise, okay, he's going to die before he actually gets thrown off the cliff. And I'm not allowed to beam, so it's like, screw it. You know what, we're just going to get the kill. And we'll finish off that guy with the final shot. We'll finish with two kills, 3.9k damage. The steel wall, the second class, the high calibre. 1,572 base XP. A pretty damn decent game for the M67. Zippo in a nice matchup again. And, yeah, that, again, you saw what happens with the flames. If someone activates a flamethrower, 
a flamethrower. I keep saying it. If someone activates a fire extinguisher, there we go, then they get fire suppression, which means that your flames become useless for like five or ten seconds. So what was the point? You may as well, if you've just been sticking with the main... And then you've got to reload the main cannon to start doing damage to them. And it, all in that time, they are still peppering you with shots. So really, the, the flamethrower is only realistically good for those tanks that you really can't pen. Like, like say, like Mouse or Type 5 or E100 and stuff like that. It's only really good for those sorts of tanks. Or for tanks that are like on 15 or 30 hit points and you're... You've been have like like we saw with the forty five TP right, where I'd bounced a fair few shots off his capola. It was being really awkward, and I didn't really want to take that hit again from the forty five TP. So I decided, well, he's only got thirty hit points, so you know we only have to hit him twice with the flames, and he's dead. So we just loaded the the flames, and it was like, well, good night, sir, because you know you're gone. And there that that's beautiful. We'll take that. We end up hitting something blind for two hundred and fifty. There's always something camping on that hill where those bushes are. So we aimed for the bush, popped a shot at it, blind, and we actually penned something for 250. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, and it's always nice when those blind shots come off. But yeah, we, we popped over on top of the little hill here on Vineyards and realised, I don't think there's anything down this A-line. I didn't see it, so I decided, you know what, screw it, we're going exceptionally and aggressive. And we've pushed directly to this little ridge over here. This way, we can stay hull down. We can stay safe from most of the tanks over there that are sitting at D8. And we can start trying to pepper the shots in if we can. We do notice there's a brask and a light tank, though, in front of us. So we just got to be careful that those two don't come in on us. I mean, the light tanks are one shot, but the brask obviously will take away, like, 700 of our hit points, which will be awkward. And I'm just trying to keep popping over to spot those guys that are sitting on that hill. So we get a shot through the lower plate of the SU-100 there. And I think we just bounced a T-30. I think that was a T-30 we just bounced. So we're quite kind of lucky there. And unfortunately, the, the shot only tracks the SP-1C. He rams us, and we just finish him off for that 10 HP. And now our light tank has been pushing fairly aggressively through the middle. We were starting to think, maybe I can push up to that hill over there. We unfortunately don't pen the T-71DA. The shot goes low and only tracks it, but we do get a bit of assistance on that. And now that Jagtiger 88 is tracked, we are going to start trying to put shots into that back drive wheel so we can keep him pinned there, but he ends up repairing. And this is where I'm thinking, right, okay, now is the time. We are going to push up and under their guns to where that house is, and we can then start using our good gun depression to our advantage and pushing the tempo. The Yag 88 is coming over for us, and thankfully he ends up getting shut down by the TDs behind us. We tried to get shot into his lower plate, but it didn't, didn't quite work. And... Well, I say it didn't quite work. We, we got there too late and he died. Now we've got the T30 in front of us. We get a shot into his drive wheel to pop him, to well, keep him in place. He ends up getting shut down by the CS59. We get all that juicy assistance, which is nice. We're up to 1,600 damage with 710 assistance so far. And I want to spot... There is still a lot of tanks left. We know there's three tanks spotted at K4, but I know there's probably a lot sitting on that hill at J9. So we're going to use that near 500 meters view range we've got. And we're going to push aggressively to straight under their gun line once again. And start spotting the hill. Because then once we spot, start spotting the hill, we have a lot of TDs behind us. And they should hopefully start feeding us quite a bit of assistance. As you can see, we are really starting to spot everything up. We end up missing the shot there on the Bayer, which is unfortunate. And I've... Not quite seeing the shots at this bayer, so I decided, you know what, okay, I'm going to move up to the next ridge line once again. And the Skoda T50 is sitting in a position where he can try and get shot at us, and unfortunately, we bounce off a Skoda T50 who is stuck. Come on, gun, please. And we are getting all of the assistance on those guys, though. We've got 2.8k assistance now, and we were having shots popped at us from across the way at J5. So it's something to bear in mind that those guys that pushed K5 are still trying to get shots at us, which is awkward, and that means we have to be very, very careful with how we push this next section. We're up to 3.3k assistance, because we were getting assistance on the T43 there. Now I'm unspotted. I'm like, okay, I'm going to push up and go after these guys in front of us. I went to load heat. So I went to load heat there, 
because I thought, oh, there's a bear, right? I didn't notice whether it had been killed or not. There's a bear. I want the heat rounds to go to help me go through that guy because it's going to struggle with 192 pen. And I switched to, so I pressed A as if to you know, switch to the premium rounds because I've been firing standard AP. And it was like, oh, I'm, I'm now firing flames. Which, you know, against a scorpion might have been useful because while I'm still not doing much damage, I would have killed his whole crew. But as you can see, I just kill him faster with the standard rounds. And we end up shutting down that scorpion we start to load the heat because the 257 is something that we won't pen with 192 pen again it's one of those tanks that if i had the m4082 221 standard pen i would be able to pen a 257 but not with my standard ap rounds on this tank now there's a cobra directly in front of us i was going for the drive wheel there to try and track him in place again get some tracking assistance and get some damage but he really ain't bothered about me now there's a yag panther and it's like hello mr yag panther okay sir you don't have a turret, so I'm just going to start pumping shots into you. And this is where the track traverse is a little bit awkward on the Zippo. Because I... Yeah, I can't quite keep up with his tracks. Unfortunately enough... Well, unfortunately for me, because I was about to kill it. But fortunately enough for me, it ends up getting shut down. And we can't quite get there to get any more shots into the Heavy or into the Skoda T50. Because we cap out. And fish with the victory, two kills, 2.9k damage, 3.5k assistance, first class confederate, 1908 base XP, which is a pretty damn nice game in a tier 9 game. And again, it, sh it showed a bit of the annoyances with the gun at times, but also just general light, ta light tank, general medium tank play where you can push forward, get spot in and have a good time. And th that's just the way you can play vineyards in general. And so we're on to the fourth and final replay of this video. And this is the best replay. Well, this is the best game that I've had in this tank. And we are on this map, which is Severgorsk. And this is one of those that I go. I thought I was dead way before this. <laughs> That's what it's, what it's honestly one of those games. Honestly, one of those games. You, you sit there going, oh, we are so dead. And then somehow, some way. Probably due to enemy team incompetence a little bit. You go, how did I survive? How did I win? Okay, whatever. So we're going to go to this ridge over here and see if we can, get, once again, get hull down. We can try and catch people out there crossing the B line and get free shots into the side. So we get a shot into the side of the T20 there. There's also the M56 Scorpion running away at the back, which is going to be awkward because it's a tank that has really good camo and we are going to struggle to spot that m56 if we're not careful he ends up getting on spot as you can see we wasted a fair bit of time trying to go for a shot into that guy there and that t20 basically got away with it but we're trying our best to just keep the gun firing keep the shots flowing because it's going to get awkward if we don't t keep whittling the enemy hit points down because it's literally just me and this heavy tank behind me and there is a lot of tanks here. Unfortunately, we ricochet there off of the upper plate of the STA-1. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best to angle so that it makes it so it's harder for them to pen it. And, you know, higher chance of bouncing, etc. But it's not quite working out. Because we are getting penned a decent amount. Also, our turret is broke, which is awkward. I see this Goranich coming over. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Goranich, let's go. Let's set the flames in. And he ends up putting, the, as you can see, I didn't realise quick enough. He ends up using his fire extinguisher and basically becomes immune to my flames. Which, at that point, it's like, okay, well, I may as well just fired the main cannon again because I really didn't do that much damage to him at all. So we're just pumping the shots into this Garnich, who is facehugging us. We're down to 608 hit points, but we're up to 2.3k damage. And this Hydra is going to be very, very useful because he has a lot of armour. And a big slugging gun. So we're going to poke forward, see if we can get a shot into this drive wheel of the STA on, which we do. But we also end up bleeding a shot to him in return, which is unhelpful. This T20 tries to get a shot into our rear. So it's like, okay, Mr. T20, come here, friend. I want you. I love you, T20. Let's go. There's the 1375 up there, which we have to be kind of careful of because he can get shots down onto us. But it's like, Mr. T20, you are the one I want to try and get shots into. So we get a nice shot into him with the auto aim. There's now... A light tank that's joined him. We get another shot snapped into him, which puts him down to a one shot. The T20. We get another shot into the HWK. And at this point, it's basically I hope the Hydra holds out, and I've got to hold out for this Hydra. We're bouncing all the shots from the MX13. We're just hoping that we bounce the shots from the HWK12. We get a shot into him, which puts him down to a one shot. And I'm thinking, do I reload faster? 
just about. We shut down the HWK12 there. And once again, this 1375 is above us. And we're just trying our best to make it as hard as possible for him to hit us. And we shut down the AMX 1375. And it's like, oh god, there's a Capture King Tiger. So he, there's now a, a new tank's joined the fray. We get a shot into track him in place which actually made him miss the first shot which is useful we're going for the shot into his lower plate but it ends up actually tracking him in place again which is kind of helpful so we're just going to get round him get past his turret traverse pop a shot into his side and at this point i'm thinking well i've got you bro the shot into the side ends up hitting the upper plate and it's like oh god here we go and we die it's like, thank you, RNG. I mean, I could have aimed it a little bit better as well. If we'd aimed it a little bit more to the right, we would have definitely hit his side. But it gave it that margin for error to hit the upper plate. And unfortunately, hit the upper plate. And the Capture King Tiger managed to shut us down. But that is one of those situations where two of us held off so many tanks. And I have no idea how. And finished the game with two kills, 4.9k damage, 896 assistance, a fair amount of blocks. The first class, the high caliber, the Confederate, 916 basic XP again. A really nice game for the Soldier M56 Zippo. Or the Soldier on M66 Zippo. So yeah, the Zippo. Realistically, I feel like the M4082 is just as good, which most people are going to have. And 10,600 gold is a little bit too much for this tank. The only real reason you'd get this tank, if I'm honest, is either you like Megadeth or you want to just meet with flamethrowers. It's pretty much for me personally, but I, I'm not a fan of these types of tanks anyway. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success!